Are we ready to get started? Okay, good. High energy equals high income, so are we ready to get started? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. I appreciate that very much. Lead follow-up and pre-qualification. All the money is in, in lead follow-up. And here's what I mean by that. Maybe you've heard this. I got really good at asking sellers what was important to them. It wasn't about me anymore, right? It wasn't about what I could receive. And learning the, what their motivation was, which turned my listing business around. I went from closing 60% of my listing appointments to closing 80% of my listing appointments, which allowed me the opportunity to close more business with fewer leads in less time, which gave me more Yay! Good morning, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you for taking some time and coming out and learning and sharing so we can all learn. Uh, my name is Mark Ramey. If, what's so exciting to me is when you see so many people that are dedicated to their craft to be willing to take time out of their busy schedule to come and learn. And I love it because I get to learn with you. So thank you kindly. I always like to begin by saying that. Um, some of you know me, some of you don't, and I'm looking forward to getting to know the ones that I don't know. But if you knew me, I mean really knew me, you would know that right around 2019, I was about 17 years into the real estate business and yeah, I'm, I'm that old. <laughs> and um, it was 2019 is when it happened. And my, uh, my passion for the real estate industry just began to fade. How many of you have experienced that? Good. Good for you. I mean, I have to do a be honest. You know, and, and what that did is it caused my ability to close clients and serve them at a high level to diminish. And that was a problem. So I went to my coach. I've been coached, oh my gosh, since 2004 at the time. And I asked him, I said, you know, this is what's happening. And he, he said, I'm gonna ask you a question. He said, when you're working with your clients, what is your intention? He said, is your intention to take or is it to give? He said, is it to be right or is it to seek to understand. Now, those were very common or simple questions, right? And yet at the time, that made me feel very uncomfortable and they seemed very complicated to me. And the reason that I, now looking back, I know the reason that it caused me to feel uncomfortable is because it created a duality inside of me. And that duality essentially was a challenge for me. And so when I started to become real and understand where that was coming from, I realized that I was looking at clients for what I could get from them versus the service that I could deliver to them. And I had to do a be honest with myself. And, and that was painful for me to acknowledge that. That became an opposing intention. And that opposing intention made it hard for me to serve people at a high level. It also made me feel not worthy enough to ask clients for business and close them effectively. So here I was, I was selling 80 homes a year and I wasn't happy. I mean, that just doesn't seem like those two things go together, right? Yeah. So those two questions, they gave me clarity. They helped me see where the challenge was, and then they also gave me the opportunity to do something to correct it. So that's the, that's the gift I received. So I spent the next four years uh, being coached by Aaron Novello, my coach, and getting very good. Glad you're here, Myra. Good to see you. Thank you for making it. I know you came from a long distance. Welcome, welcome. Uh, getting very good at setting more appointments by using... Uh, lead follow-up consistently and regularly, and also getting very good at the pre-qualification script. And that's what we're here to learn today, is this, just the fine points of lead follow-up, 
which you all are professionals, you all know, and yet we can always learn a little bit more, as well as the pre-qualification script. So I got really good at asking sellers what was important to them. It wasn't about me anymore, right? It wasn't about what I could receive. And learning the, what their motivation was, which turned my listing business around. I went from closing 60% of my listing appointments to closing 80% of my listing appointments, which allowed me the opportunity to close more business with fewer leads and less time, which gave me more time back with my family. So I believe that with the right skills, each and every one of us that are in this room, we can have that. We can set more appointments because we're pre-qualifying consistently while increasing the number of listings that we receive because we're using a pre-qualifying uh, pre script. So in the last 21 years, I got into real estate when I was 10. No, I didn't. <laughs> um, in the last 21 years, I've had the privilege of helping 1,200 families, over 1,200 families, buy and sell real estate. Um, I've helped hundreds of agents just like you accomplish what they want to accomplish and grow in their business. So for the next about 50 minutes, we're going to pick apart the prequal and also the, um, the prospecting as well as lead follow-up, primarily lead follow-up, so that we can all grow from this. Um, so that way you can also get more appointments. I'll demonstrate to you how to use the pre-qualification script so that you can get in rapport with clients and it becomes easier. And we can also identify the clients that may not be the right clients for us to be working with because they take our time, don't they? They take time away from the clients that we should be working with. So are we ready to get started? Okay, good. High energy equals high income, so are we ready to get started? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. I appreciate that very much. So, uh, here we are, lead follow-up and pre-qualification. Um, all the money is in, in lead follow-up. And here's what I mean by that. Maybe you've heard this. That would have been about $200,000 in GCI, in gross commission income. Think about if we stopped doing lead follow-up. What that translates to is that $200,000 in GCI goes from that to $60,000 just because we didn't do lead follow-up, which tells us we really can't afford to not do lead follow-up. In fact, we probably should look at how we can do it more and make it easier for ourselves. And that's some of the things that we're gonna look at today. So let's start off, we're gonna talk about five tactics for setting more appointments doing lead follow-up. And the first one that we're gonna talk about is water skiing versus scuba diving. And no, we're not gonna get wet, don't worry, all right, I promise. So, water skiing, what that means and what I'm referencing there is water skiing, you're just going skimming along the surface of the water, right? That's it, you're not going down deep. It literally takes little to no skill because I might simply just be asking the question, uh, you know, where are you moving to? And not getting much further than that, right? Um, the big mistakes that agents make, and including, you know, I did this over time, and I've had role plays with hundreds and hundreds of agents, is they tend to like to assume what a client's motivation is. So it might sound like this, and this is typically what I would run into in a role play with agents, because I've role played for years, is, um, where are you moving to? Oh, well, we're going to Arizona. Okay, great. So if I could sell your home faster than anyone else, would you have me over for an appointment? Or if I could get you more than anyone else, would you have me over for an appointment? Now that's water skiing. Right? You're shaking your head, it's ridiculous, right? Yeah, it's ridiculous. So we're not going down deep. And we're not getting to a place where we're really understanding what's super important to our clients. Now on the contrary, that would be, if we, if we really wanted to do well, we would scuba dive with clients. And that is, when we scuba dive, typically, we gotta put on all the gear, right? We've got to be ready and willing to go deep with a client. And that means it requires skill. It also requires courage. Because if you remember at the beginning of my presentation, I shared that I didn't believe that I had the right to ask clients for business. So that's, that's something that I had to get past. But it came from that internal experience of 
me thinking, oh, it's about me. That was the difference. So criteria questions close from a place of contribution, and they also close by adding value. And how many of you have heard of criteria questions? Take a moment and write these three questions down, and I'm going to demonstrate them to you. They're simple and easy. Write what's important about, what's important about, that's the first question. About. 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 Question mark, yep. How's that important? How's that important? Question mark. And ultimately, what will that do for you? Ultimately, what will that do for you? And they, they would need to be asked in that order. Who has closed a sale recently with a seller that you know their motivation and it was a motivation where they had to sell? You got one? Okay. All right. Would you role play with me? Sure. Okay. All right, so um, actually what's interesting is um, you and I have recently closed this out together. So let's do that. And what was your client's motivation? He was looking for an investment to um, for his family's uh, business. Okay. He's an investor, so he was looking for a rental property. Okay, all right. So um, let's, let's start off then. So in this case, Tell me, what's important to you about getting this rental property? Am I playing him? You're going to be him. him. Yeah. Uh, it's important that it's close to my home so I can keep an eye on it, make sure that it's uh, kept up and needs any maintenance and repairs. And I'm looking for something that will help my future for my family, especially for my children, that they can you know, have a business to grow into. Future for your family and you want this future for your children so they have a business to grow into. So that future for your family and children having a business, how's that important to you? For their, um, my children are very important to me and it's, a, it's important for me to know that they have the tools and the resources to you know, start a business of their own instead of just getting into a day in, day out job. Okay, thank you so much, Teresa, for sharing that with me. So you want your children to have tools and resources so that they can actually have the ability to earn an income outside of just you know, going and grinding every single day, mm -hmm. correct? Right. Wow, that's important. So it's gonna, it's gonna cause your kids to not have to grind. So let's say, Teresa, you and I, we go out and we find this property. And it's a money maker. And it's going to help your family and your kids have tools and resources so that financially they can function at a high level and they don't have to grind every day. Ultimately, what will that do for you? Um, give me satisfaction that they have a business and I can retire. <laughs> wow. Satisfaction that they have a business. Isn't that, that sounds fulfilling. Wow. And then you get to retire? That's exciting. You go back and forth to Albania. That's you get to go back and forth to Albania and visit family. Yeah. What a rich experience. Albania, so they do that a lot. They, they um, buy homes and they're self-sufficient. And then they, as they age, they go back to Albania. I've worked with parents, Albanian parents, and this fellow. Wow. Thank you for sharing that with me, Teresa. I appreciate that very much. So I'm curious, if we were to get together and talk about a plan that would actually identify that property so that things financially could work for you and you'd have that satisfaction and that fulfilling visits to, to Albania, would you be open to having a meeting with me? Absolutely. Okay, terrific. Did you guys hear the difference between a close? What we got to was satisfaction, if you think about it, is an emotion, right? And that's the purpose of these three questions. If you notice, we couldn't get there until we got to that third question. Does that make sense? Okay, all right. And then the first close, if you remember, was I can get you more, faster, faster, more. 
People don't move to get more or just to get there faster. That's not a reason. Thank you. I appreciate you, Teresa. And it comes as no surprise that you were able to help that client with my listing, by the way. I appreciate doing that transaction. It worked. Yes, it did. It's funny. I just I have to throw this in. The magic number, uh, it came back in at 315. Yep. It had three deals in the last six weeks. That closed at 315,000. Wow. So that, that's why I knew that was the right number when you saw it came back. Thank you. I'm grateful. And thank you for helping us demonstrate that point. Guys, keep those three questions. Use them frequently because that's what's going to get us to the emotion. And the emotion is what causes people to, to purchase, causes them to make a decision. Logic just makes them think. So let's move on to the next uh, tactic, and that would be role playing consistently and constantly. Okay, how many of you role play? Okay, good for you. That's awesome. And the reason and the purpose that this is important is as we move from a speed based environment in our market, right? Where everything was flying off the shelves quicker than you could and it didn't matter what we said, people were just going to sign contracts with us because that was the market in 2022, right? To a skill-based environment, we have to role play constantly. And the reason for this is so that we deliver in the moments that matter most. In other words, when we've got to close and get to a place where we can actually guide a client to their desired outcome, if we're not doing that, then we won't function at a high level. Because remember, knowledge equals confidence, and ignorance equals fear. And can clients sense when we're afraid? Yes. Like, have you ever been treated by a doctor that maybe was a little timid and not certain? That's freaky, isn't it? It's a little <laughs> scary. Okay, all right. So that's why we got a role play. Let's move on to the next number three tactic, is prospect and lead follow-up for three to four hours per day. So here's why this has to happen. In 2022, there were 6 million transactions. And that's how we'll, get, we'll be successful. The, so I could spend a whole lot of time doing lead.